Well, Jarvis Williams, this is the first time that you and I are coming together to have another conversation since you've taken on this new role at the Horizons Project as the Director for Race and Democracy. And so our thinking was that we wanted to have a conversation again that we could share with our kind of broader audiences and constituencies just to share a little bit about why uh, we made that change within Horizons, what we've been thinking about with regards to this role and kind of how we came to this decision. And so before I turn it over to you, I guess since the founding of Horizons in 2022, we've really been in a lot of different networks and coalitional environments and spaces where we're reflecting on this democracy agenda. And as I talk about all the time, if you're in this kind of ecosystem organizing mode, you're engaging with a lot of different theories of change around how we're gonna support democracy. And we've been reflecting both internally and with our colleagues, the ways that conversations around race don't necessarily show up in some of these different spaces or coalitions. And it might be that there's a, a technocratic, very kind of institutional change conversation that we want to make sure to have bipartisanship discussions. It might be kind of a bridge building space where we're really prioritizing empathy and civility and people coming together across different lines of difference, whether they're geographic or ideological. And so this might seem as a progressive concept or issue. It might be seen as overly conflictive. And we really see that in order for us to be working on democracy, in order for us uh, to be effectively bringing these different kind of theories of change together, there's such a huge gap with the way that we're going to address racial equity concerns and historic issues um, that we're obviously seeing a, a backlash against teaching of history and how we incorporate these concepts into our even educational systems, which is all a part of an attack on democracy <laughs> in our um, view. And so we really wanted to prioritize closing that gap between the conversations that are happening, the actors, the sectors that need to find a way to be more aligned and, you know, we've always been really committed to stepping into the tensions. <laughs> so, okay, we've invited you into this role. You've grabbed onto it with gusto. And so we wanted to share what this means now for you and for Horizons. Yeah, so, well, one, it's so good to, to be in a space where we're trying to lean into the tension. I think more so than anything over the time that I've been uh, fortunate enough to be in conversations with whether you're talking about public officials or pastors or organizers or business personnel, there are serious concerns around how do we talk about, how do we think about uh, the tension between the bucket we call democracy and the characters who constitute that space that we usually refer to as racialized or ethnic identities. And um, I think you're right in the sense that uh, the fear of making a mistake, the fear of organizational mismanagement, the fear of not having enough information, the fear of not knowing enough history, uh, the fear emotionally of what it might mean to your family, your networks, the fear of the future that we have not yet seen of where we may be headed and what racial constitution might be waiting for us. All of that and all of those fears are real. And so this opportunity that we are leaning into, I think is a real need. It's a need for people to lean into tension, not afraid, responsible, with integrity, with empathy, but not shying away from the hard conversations. And I think for us, race and democracy and the project and the work we're doing, in the new role that we've created is a signal to the ecosystem that this is the way forward. Yeah. So then maybe why don't we put 
as much of a fine point on what we even mean by this race and democracy bucket or portfolio or line of work, just to understand, because, you know, it's not like we have all the answers. When we jumped into Horizons, I actually think that was an underlying ethos. We have a lot of resources to share. We be really believe in bringing people together, unlikely bedfellows that might not have known each other and need to be in conversation. And so it's the magic of those connections that we're weaving together. And yet we do have a concept of what we're working towards, don't we? And so maybe you can share yeah. more about that concept, even with the humility with which we come to this work. Sure. So maybe I could describe the situation that we recognize, and then maybe this is how we started thinking about it. We started to notice that there were kind of a, two buckets of work or ways of describing work that we all thought made sense about pro-democracy work. There was a way of doing pro-democracy work that leaned into democratic language that shied away from race because the idea was, I think, with the best intentions, that if we believe everyone is equal, then maybe the way forward is to not dramatize our distinctions around racial lines and to try to lean into a way of doing work to ensure our institutions, our practices, our procedures, our organizations embodied a democratic ethos that didn't privilege color. And then you have a, another trajectory that said, no, you have to concentrate directly on the question of race because of the way in which we have tried to practice democracy, we have failed to do justice to the way race complicates those practices. And so we need to lean in on that language and lean in on those practices. And so both groups trying to get us where we wanna go, but still struggling to describe what they're doing and to connect dots, that if we're going to actually create this multiracial democracy, we have to create the space where these two traditions find each other and, and have creative tension with each other. And so I think we saw those two different strands and we wanted to figure out how do we bring those together? I think the latest report that came out from Civic Perceptions Lab project where they show if you wanna bring people together, you can use the language of democracy and it's, provo and it's provocative. And the, the worst term you can use, they don't say it that way, but it seems you can draw this from their insights. You started talking about racial equity. It's the least likely term to bring people together. Well, we want to bring people together, but you could easily walk away from that and say, well, I'm just going to lean in on talking about democracy and leave racial equity off the table because it's going to bring people together. And simultaneously, you could say, well, here is the problem. So we got to just talk about racial equity because democracy is not interesting. However you choose to walk away from that conversation, what we believe uh, is that those two concepts have to meet. And that's the situation that brought me into and us to think about the democracy and race role, that we are trying to do the hard work of bringing two traditions who are struggling to find common ground on a lot of things and say, no, we, we have to find it. This is the way forward. I guess what I would share from a, a personal perspective, Jarvis, is that from my background of working in international peace building, mm -hmm. we know as peace builders, as those who are working in some of the most entrenched conflict dynamics around the world, that unless you get to these root causes of injustice, the historical elements that are leading to society's ills <laughs> that are systemic and historic, and they're the most difficult ones to reflect on because they're so emotional for people. And we're experiencing mm. now, right? Just the heightened emotions around this issue. And I appreciate you saying that there's a lot of fear around saying the wrong things. If we're trying to find common ground, sometimes it's hard when we've experienced this recent emergence and resurgence of understanding the depth of this problem in the, in the movements of 2020 with Black Lives Matter. And now we're fully feeling the backlash against that. I mean, there's just, there is a lot of emotions involved in this work. 
And yet, if there is a, a shared future amongst us, and again, I, I go back to the peace building framework, you have to unify these inequities with our democratic governance and the deepest of historic harms. And because otherwise we can't move forward together. No, absolutely. I remember from my context of doing pastoral work in, in parish ministries, as some would describe it, and you deal with counseling moments. And this is kind of leads into why we work the way we do, because sometimes people can be in a relationship and not know how much they are not communicating with each other until things go bad. And so what I suspect listening to people who are facing the situation we described, having to manage this, this tradition of democracy and the challenges that democracy have unlocked with racial inequities, racial injustice, et cetera, what skills do they need to be able to implement their strategies of doing this work? And one of the things that I've landed on, and I think people who've been in the ecosystem can see, is that, yes, we need data. Yes, we need the research. Yes, we need the climate scientists. And yes, we need technology and AI experts and business personnel. Uh, and those hard skills and those hard sciences are our part. We need to be able to build the infrastructure. We need all of those tools. But we also need, and here is where I think so many efforts I've seen up close and personal fail. We need the emotional intelligence. We need the historical resources. We need the, the ability to sit with an uncomfortable topic. We need the narrative edge so that we can understand who we're communicating with, but even more so, the ability to recognize where we are coming from as we attempt to be in relationship. And it's that self-awareness, this knowing your story, knowing the story you're a part of, I think seems to be a glaring gap in people who are really doing great work and have mustered so many great skills. Uh, but part of what they have to work harder to do is to ask that question, when I go into my ecosystem, how does the ecosystem understand the story that I'm a part of? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought up narratives because I super am always down to, to reflect on narratives in any context, as you know. I also think it's really important for us to remind our partners that Horizons is really animated in a particular moment in history right now which we really feel that there is a political project to use these stories to maintain political power. And so we talk a lot about how authoritarianism works. We talk a lot about our brains on fear and about the lizard brain. When you're fearful and you're being told to be afraid of others, you cleave to your in-group. And so it makes this narrative work that much more challenging when we're trying to engage across difference. And so many of us are trying to build those bridges partially so that this larger pro-democracy movement or the movement that's going to galvanize the broadest number of people to get on board for this shared future of a multiracial, inclusive, pluralistic democracy, you know, it requires <laughs> of us to not only be able to understand the narrative challenge that, that we share in our interpersonal relationships and to cross divides and build allyship, but also to understand the narratives being wielded against us and to go on offense and to be very savvy about how we're being manipulated in this moment to other eyes and the impacts that it has. Absolutely. I remember being in class, in some statistics class, and one way of learning statistics is to read a book about how to lie with statistics. Because the idea was, if you don't understand how the information is being created, you're vulnerable to being manipulated by the information. And I would say the same thing. We need to be just that systematic and intentional about narratives, that there are ways that narratives can easily be part of a manipulation to achieve objectives and things that those who are a part of the narrative, those who are participating, wouldn't recognize. 
Yeah. And we all get swept up in our own stories, don't we? We're all swimming in this sea of confusion and misinformation. And so I guess what I would close with, Jarvis, is to say just I appreciate the vulnerability that we get to share this moment of putting ourselves out there by naming a gap, naming the tensions with all the humility of not knowing the answers, but having some areas of exploration we want to continue to dig into with our partners. I appreciate that. It's been a joy to be at Horizons. And I think the best thing that we can offer is that you will make mistakes, but if you just try, learn, and try, and learn, and try, and be honest, and learn, we'll find our way. Most of the time, the bad experiences that I've seen in the ecosystem usually come from our unwillingness to try mm. and to be honest about where we are and to try. And so as long as we're reaching, uh, I think we we will find our way. <laughs> here, here. Okay, well, this is kicking off the first of what we hope will be many conversations on this topic. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking forward to hearing more from a lot of different perspectives. And thanks again for your leadership on this. Stay tuned. Looking forward to it.